Oh, it's on me now. Can you hear? All right. Hello, good morning, welcome everybody. Today in this session, we'll be talking about Code Builder for admins and how it can be useful for you and folks on your team. Before I get started, I'd like to remind you that Salesforce is a publicly traded company and all of your purchasing decisions should be made based on generally available products. With that said, my name is James Fryman. I'm joined today by my colleague Satya Sekhar. And we are developers and advocates for the tools that you use to build on top of the Salesforce platform. So I want to start with a question. I know many of you have probably heard about Salesforce DX tooling and the super powerful source-driven tools that we have available. However, have you tried to install them locally and had problems? Yeah, I see it, right? And we hear it from our users too, developers and admins alike. They tell us it takes too long. They tell us it's too complex. They tell us our policy doesn't even allow us to install these things. Well, that's a challenge, right? And so we've actually released a new tool that we've GA'd that I want to talk to you today about, and that is CodeBuilder. CodeBuilder is a Salesforce-optimized development environment right in your browser, bringing to you the power of Salesforce into your web for you to be productive immediately. It's built upon our partnership with AWS and includes support for all of the Salesforce languages and frameworks that you've come to know, use, and love. It also includes support for point-and-click tools like our Sockle Builder that allows you to get data insights very quickly and easily. But I'm talking about an admin tool in a development discussion. Why is that, right? I want to tell you that we want to get you started. We want to get you started much faster, much easier, much more efficiently than it is able today. Fewer clicks, fewer things to push, fewer things to go, right? Today, there's a lot of things that you may have to do in order to get approval. However, we want you to get going within as few clicks as possible. And it's not even just our tools that are available that we use for de developers, right? We have tools that are, make you more effective easily and immediately with data-driven tools like our Sockle Query Builder. Using the Sockle Query Builder, you should be able to point and click and build complex queries, generate code, and use that code in other various areas in order to extend and get insight and data discovery very quickly and very easily. And Code Builder is more than just our new web-based editor. It's now our new platform for how we're going to be delivering and executing all of the tools and products that, we, that you have known and come to love, and this is how we're going to be going forward. The same tools that are available on your local install Visual Studio Code will be available inside of Code Builder. So you shouldn't ever have to worry about feature disparity between your two environments. Before I get started, I want to just talk about how it gets installed and give you a quick example. So as an admin, you're going to install Code Builder onto your org via Manage Package. Once that Manage Package gets installed, you will go ahead and assign permissions to the various users that have access to Code Builder. Once they have access to Code Builder, they can log in and do operations like they normally would. However, getting access to Code Builder doesn't mean they necessarily get access to everything. For example, if you assign a user permissions to have access to Code Builder, but say they don't have access to your full sandbox, Getting access to Code Builder is not automatically going to get them access to the full sandbox. So you have two permission sets that you have to manage both ways. That being said, I want to actually show some cool stuff and stop talking. So I'm going to pass you off to my colleague Satya for a cool demo. Thank you, James. Yes, so as James said, you can install the Code Builder as a managed package. Once you install the Code Builder, and set the permissions, you can access it right from your app launcher. Here you can see the code builder. And from this code builder uh, front end, you can launch the, click the launch button to launch the environment. Once you click this button, you'll be in this code builder environment where on the left side you can see an activity bar which has a bunch of icons, buttons. When you click one of the buttons, it is going to open a view in the sidebar for instance, I open. I can open the Explorer here. You can see the files in the sidebar, and in the central area, 
which is the editor, wherein you can run your tools, you can edit your files, so on and so forth. You can do all of the things that you do with the code builder in the central area. And at the bottom, you can see a status bar, which has which is connected to the GitHub repository. You can see the status there. You can also see the status of any problems or errors that are there in your code, and also any warnings here. And you can also see that you can launch the connected org right from your code builder with this button. And there is a button on the right side. When you click that, you can connect any of your sandbox production orgs that James was talking about. Here you can see various options with which you can connect to the orgs. I've already connected a couple of orgs. I can click one of the orgs to make it as a default org. Once it is connected as default org, I can launch it using this button here, open org, which is going to open my default org. In the interest of time, I already opened the org here. Here you can see I have an eBikes app org. So if you're wondering what is this org, it is one of the sample apps in which you can find in your developer website. So here uh, you can go to the developer website. Within developer website, you can go to uh, code samples and SDKs. And here is where you can find various sample apps. And today I've installed this eBikes LWC app, which you can access through GitHub repository. And this GitHub, GitHub repository has a very nice documentation with which you can easily understand, deploy the code, and start experimenting with it. Now, already deployed, so let's go back here. And here is the e-bikes app, which deals with the retail sales of the e-bikes. Now, I have different tabs here. So I have a product explorer, wherein I have various lighting web components. So on the left side, you can see a filter. I can search for a product based on its price. Maybe I can search for a product based on the category, material, so on and so forth. And when I click one of the bikes here, I can see the detailed information here in another component. Now, this component shows all of the information, but it doesn't show the availability of the bike. So we have a requirement wherein we, as administrators, want to uh, implement that particular change, where we want to show the availability as one of the fields, topmost fields here in the list. I know this eBikes app, is eBikes uh, records are stored in a product object, but I don't know what are the different fields that are there in the product object. So what we'll do is, we'll go to the code builder, and we'll use our awesome Sockle builder uh, James was talking about to see, dig in, and see what are the different fields. And we'll also see if we can find the field for showing the availability here. To do that, let's go back to the code builder. Here you can launch the command palette and type Sockle, where you can see the options to execute the Sockle query or create query in Sockle builder. Let's select this option. Now the Sockle builder is launched. Here you can go and select your object. I know that the object is product underscore underscore C, and here I see the product. Let's select the product, and here in the next uh, section you can select the fields that you want to show. Let me select, let us say I want to select the product name. Maybe I can do that. And I also want to see what field fits best for the availability, maybe status field. So let's go and see if status field works for us. And while I'm selecting the object and the fields, here on the right side, you can see that it's dynamically creating the query for me. I can run the query and see the output. So here I can see uh, the names of the e-bikes, and I can also see the status, whether it's sold, available, whatsoever. I can also export it as a CSV file so that you can run your analytics later. Or maybe if you want to do the integration, you can also export it as a JSON file. OK, now we know that we need to fix the code with the status field. Let's go back once again to the eBay store and see what we'll have to do. So we want to make the changes here in this component. Whenever I click a but, uh, eBay record here, I should be able to show the details here. So let's go and open. You can open the app builder and see what is the name of this component. I can click this edit page, which is going to open up the app builder for me. And within App Builder, I can select the component. And here I can see that the component name is product card. So what I'll do is we'll go back to the org and start working on the product card LWC component. So here I'm back in the, let, let us close this. And here I'm back in the code builder environment, wherein 
I'm using a sandbox which is shared with my other uh, teammates. So I don't know if they have made any changes, so I just want to pull the latest changes out of the org. So for that, I can do, what I can do is I can go and launch this org browser. When I click this org browser, here you can see the metadata. You can see all of the metadata in your org, and you can pull whatever metadata you want to work on. Now in this case, I want to work on the lighting web component. So if I go down, I can see various lighting web components here, and I can find my product card component. And I can click this button to retrieve the source code. So when I click this button, it retrieves the source code and opens it in your code builder environment. So if you go to the file, file explorer, here you can see that it got all the four components, uh, four, four files of the component, HTML file, JavaScript file, and CSS file. So Lighting Web Components is based on the web standards, so you'll be working on the HTML and JavaScript files. And most of the code is like is based on some kind of pattern here. So let's see if we can fix this thing with that kind of pattern. If you see the code, here we can see a bunch of import statements. And these import statements are importing various fields. Now we want to show the status field, so let's also import the status field. So I can copy this. And I can paste it here, and yep. Let's paste the status field. Let's call it as status field. Let's copy this. And here, in fact, I made all the, already I made the change. I've added the status field here. I have an additional field. So these are the only two patterns. I can, I've copied the import statement. I copied the status field. And then, these fields are exposed to the template so that I can show it in the template. If you go to the template file, here in the template file, uh, you can copy paste the, in fact, I just was doing working on it. So you can copy paste the from this pattern category field. Let's go here and paste it here. Uh, so let us change it to, say, status field. And I, I need not save it. Like, you no, know, while I'm typing it, Code Builder automatically saves your file, whatever changes you make. Now, I want to make sure that the changes uh, that I wanted to make are relative to the changes that are there in the org. For that, I can go here and click and <coughs> select this button, div file against org. When I do this, it is going to check with this org and see what are the changes that I've made. And here, I've just changed the status field. So I can go and deploy this change. When you deploy the source to org, you can go back to the Product Explorer and refresh the page. And when you click this, you should be able to see the status field here as the first field. OK, now that we have made the changes, so if you're wondering how to get started, how to learn from where to learn, then it's pretty easy. Even if you don't remember how to launch the uh, Sockle Builder and all, you can go to the Code Builder. And on the right side, you can see a button, a cloud with a question kind of button. When you click this button, it is going to open the resources. And here you can see various resources from which you can learn. For instance, if you want to see what you can do with the code builder, you can, or if you want to see how to run the Sockle query, you can click this button. It shows the various steps with which you can run the, start the Sockle builder and run the Sockle query. So that's a lot for this demo. And I want to hand it back to James. Thank you. Can you go back to the slides real quick? Yeah. Perfect. So thank you very much, Satya. Um, if you are interested in this at all, we invite you here to take a look at some of our resources. Um, all of the resources that Satya just pointed out are available on this QR code, our development resources, more videos on how this is used in the wild. Um, and we'd love for you to get started with it. Tell us how you like it. Tell us what you don't like about it. And then tell us what you really like about it. And then we'll go, we'll, we'll love to hear from you. Thank you very much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. We look forward to hearing how you use CodeBuilder to be more productive using a modern web IDE browser-based environment. Uh, there's plenty more TDX for us for you today, especially in the DX realm. Please visit some more of our uh, sessions. And we look forward to talking to you some more. Thank you very much. Thank you.